Okay, let's get underway. So um, I'm Jonathan Field. I'm one of the founders of uh, PTFS Europe and um, we're coming up to lunchtime. So we're going to be dishing up a little bit of sushi before lunch. Um, so what I want to talk about really in this next half an hour, um, as Jesse and Kelly mentioned, we had this big piece of new functionality in 2211, the electronic resources management module. Uh, which has been great. It's been a really good enhancement. Uh, it added the ability to add agreements, licenses, e-holdings. Um, and our development team over the last three months or so, uh, and Matt is one of those who's over there, has been working on adding usage statistics to uh, that module as well. So that's a very important uh, enhancement. And as part of that, we've added the ability to add data platforms or providers uh, and reports as well. So just before I show you what we're going to have a look at, um, data providers or platforms as publishers often call them, uh, this is really your, uh, the, the place where you can get counter compliance statistics that your publisher will provide to you. Uh, so counters uh, are a very well defined standard. I don't know how, how many of you are familiar with the, the Project Counter website, but there is this registry that allows you to look at the, all the publishers that are out there. It allows you to uh, see what they support. So, for example, if we just perhaps have a look at uh, Wiley. We've got some information about the publisher. We can see they support Counter 5. Uh, we can look at their sushi credentials, so the endpoint, the API endpoint where we harvest the st statistics from. And importantly, we can see what report, counter report types they support. So there's a large range of counter uh, reports that are available. And you can see here that uh, Wiley are supporting a lot of them, but, but not the item reports. So there's probably a very good reason that's the case. So this is a good resource if you just want to go and look up uh, information about what is supported. Um, and we're going to use this in, in order to sort of get our SUSHI information. So SUSHI stands for the Standardized Usage Statistics Harvesting Initiative, which slips off the tongue beautifully. Um, so it, what it is, is really a mechanism to automate the gathering of those counter statistics into a system. It gives you an endpoint, an API endpoint, where you can go and grab those statistics. The other half of it is the ability to actually report on those statistics. And that's hugely important because uh, libraries more and more are questioning the value of these electronic resources that they're purchasing. What actually is the value to us? Uh, are we actually having users engaging with these platforms and therefore are, are we getting uh, value for money out of them. So we've chosen to actually report all four of the counter report types. A counter as a standard has four report types, platform, database, title and item reports. Uh, and they all start with a, um, uh, a character at the beginning. So PR, DR, T, IR, uh, and then they'll have a, a uh, a sort of suffix, which is the report name. So there's platform reports. Uh, these are very general summaries, really, of uh, platform usage, overall platform usage. Uh, database reports, they all start DR, and they're a very specific activity to the usage of uh, specific databases that you might subscribe to. Then the T reports, these are the title reports, and these are probably the most useful. They give you usage statistics uh, of specific e-journal titles. So it's, it's very useful to be able to identify exactly how well an individual title that's perhaps purchased individually or as part of a package is being used. And then finally, the IR, the item reports. Um, so these are sometimes used for sort of multimedia items, things like that. So again, another report type. And right now, we're only going to support counter five unless there's a very good reason to go back and support counter four. So uh, at the minute, we don't really have a use case. Most of the big publishers support counter five. So uh, at this point, we're looking at counter five and then moving forward from counter five uh, as, as it evolves. 
Okay, so let's go and have a look at what we've, what we've done. So I'm here on, um, on my uh, demo system. So we've got the electronic resources management module enabled. And for those of you who've already gone and looked at it, some of this will be familiar to you. Um, so at the top here, we've got the agreements, the licenses, the e-holdings, your packages, your titles. But we've got this new menu at the bottom here, which is all for e-usage. So this is where we first of all set up our providers or platforms. And it gives, gives us the option to set up the, the sushi details and then the ability underneath that to report on what we're harvesting. So let's, let's just have a look at our, a little bit bigger, yeah. How's that? A little bit better, I might even go a bit bigger. What's that? Okay, so these are our data providers. Um, the first thing to just notice in this table, so I've, I've already set up um, five providers here to show you. And the first thing just to notice about this table is we can see the last time we've harvested data from this provider. So that's, that's our last run date. And we can see whether this provider is active or inactive. So do we actually want to harvest from this provider or don't we? Now, harvesting will, can take place in one of two ways. It can take place by us manually harvesting. That's what this, this button here is for. But it can also take place via a cron script that runs in the background. Now, regardless of whether you do it via the cron script or, or via the UI, we only ever will harvest active providers. Um, and just to show you sort of how that works, you can see this provider is inactive. If I hit the run now button, it, it tells me this provider is actually inactive at the moment. Do we want to change their status? So for now, we'll just, we'll just leave them. We've also got a button here to test the sushi credentials. So I've already input some sushi credentials into these providers. And the sushi standard allows you, has an endpoint, an API endpoint that allows you to test the credentials and ensure that that endpoint is active, ready, and waiting to uh, gather statistics. So that's what this test button does. And uh, I discovered first thing this morning that the university network is blocking that traffic. So I'm hoping this is going to work because I'm tethered to my phone. But if I just test the relief, so we've got a, <laughs> We can see that the endpoint is there, it's active, I can talk to the endpoint. So uh, that's a great start. Let's just have a look at one of these uh, providers now. So I'm gonna take this one here, the books and platforms provider, and I'm just going to edit the form just to show you what the form looks like. So just to say the edit form is exactly the same as the, um, uh, as the new provider button. You see here, it's, it's the same, exactly the same form. Um, so what we can see here is we've got the data provider name, uh, a description, and then a number of required fields. So just looking through these, first of all, whether the, uh, the harvest status is set to active or inactive. So that's what we saw on the previous screen. And then importantly, the report types that this platform of provider support. So this goes back to this registry here. So here we can see all these reports are supported. Um, and I've actually set up, um, I've set up two different reports for this provider, but if I drop down the menu here, you can see there's a whole long, quite a long list of report types that are available. Uh, and these cover the whole uh, breadth of report types that are available via counter. So you can uh, either add, add new ones or remove them as you want to. So you just add the reports that are supported and required. And then importantly, at the bottom of the field, the ability to add, uh, add the sushi credentials. So this will be the endpoint, uh, again, as, as described on the registry. And then very specific credentials that will be unique to your institution, so API keys or usernames that are unique to your institution. 
Okay, let's jump out of there and I'm going to go and just have view the books and platforms provider now, just to show you what we've got on this screen here. So again, on this details page, we can see uh, a summary of what is supported, what report types are supported. Um, we can see the Sushi credentials, but we can also see we've got multiple tabs here. And we've got a separate tab for each report type, for the titles, the items, the databases, and the platforms. Now, this provider supports both, or we're asking this provider to provide both title reports and platform reports. So I would suspect to find no information under items or databases, which is the case. But if I have a look under uh, perhaps titles, you can see that actually we have some harvested data already because uh, this is one that I harvested earlier. So we've actually got some harvested data from this platform. Um, and we've got this nice table here so I can search within if I'm looking for something specific. We've got the ability to export the data out if you want to export it out to a, an Excel spreadsheet or somewhere else. Um, and again, if I look under platforms, we can see that we've actually got some platform information here as well. Now, we've got another tab to the right of databases, the ability to manually upload a file. So there are publishers who don't provide a Sushi endpoint, but they can provide you with a counter-compatible counter file to upload. So they might send that to you by email or FTP it to you or something like that. So if you can't access a Sushi endpoint, you do have the ability to upload a counter file. And just to, um, just to show you how that works, I've got a, um, a title file which I'm going to upload. In fact, what I'll do is I'm just going to edit this and I'm going to add to my report types uh, TRJ1, which is journal requests. Going to save that. And then I'm going to manually upload this file. So it's a very standard manual upload dialog box. Uh, and here's my small title report. I, I did a small one because the long one takes forever and we haven't got time. But um, we're going to just open that one, submit it, and within a second or two, it's, it's actually import that counter file. Now, I know within that file, uh, there's a title called Allergy. So if this has worked properly, I should be able to find that title now in the title list. And there it is. So that was one of the titles that was in that file. Now that will have also imported any statistics from the counter file related to that uh, data. The final tab here is an import log, and this really is an audit trail of uh, what has happened. So if that's worked correctly, you can see there's the file I, I uploaded just now, but these are the two files I uploaded before I traveled out uh, to Helsinki. Now, the nice thing about this is we, we store the counter file permanently in COA, unless you delete it we store it. So if you want to export it to some other third party system or put it into Excel, you can actually download that counter file uh, and take it into a different system. And if you're, if you're not, familiar, oops, not familiar with what a counter file looks like, um, this, is, um, this is what it looks like. So again, if I just make that a bit bigger, you have institutional information at the top. This is all really your header information. And then scrolling down the page, you've got your title information, and then you've got your counts by, by month and year. So, so that's what the native uh, counter file looks like. OK, let's go back to the data providers then. Um, and the next thing really to talk about is actually harvesting that data. So. I've harvested some data by uploading a counter file, but I now want to harvest some data via Sushi. Um, and as I mentioned, there's, there's two ways to do that. I can use the Run Now button, but 
Probably in reality and in practice, you'll run the, the cron script, which runs in the background, which is called the ERM, ERM run harvester. Uh, and that will just go through all your providers and collect data for all of those. So counter statistics are monthly. So typically, maybe you run this once a month, once every couple of months to do the harvesting. Um, and it will only harvest your active providers, of course. There's also an option on that cron script to do a dry run. So that will only uh, tell you what would have happened without actually importing the statistics. So that's quite a nice uh, little feature. It also goes back to your last run date uh, to identify when the last statistics were collected from that provider. And it will attempt to collect everything since there. So the statistics are incrementally growing as the script is, is period, periodically running. Uh, and the final thing to say is that when the script runs or when we run the importer, it will add any new titles to that title database that we saw just now. If the title has previously been harvested, it won't add the title. It will only add the statistics, the latest statistics for that title. Uh, and again, we'll see that in, in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest this provider here, this multiple reports provider, and they, they provide the TRJ1 and TRJ2 reports. Um, so I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm going to see whether this works. So it's asking me when I want to harvest the data for. So if I want to do, do a one-off ad hoc, maybe just capture last month's statistics, I can, I can just go back a month. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to last year, the beginning of last year, and get all the statistics from the 1st of January 2022. Okay, so I've run that. What that does is it, it schedules two background jobs, uh, not one, two, one for each report. And if we just open these uh, in a new window, You can see it's going to request the sushi service, and it's got a progress bar here. And this is where I start feeling a little bit nervous. And see, right, this is good news. So we've got the progress bar now starting. So one of the things that we've enhanced is the is the background jobs process, so that you actually get a progress bar rather than just it's it's finished. And if I refresh this page, you can see. We get a progress of the number of titles in the file that have been processed. So it's not just the file. Now that's going to take a moment or two to harvest. So while that's happening, I'm going to go back here and just point out this button here, which is the data provider's summary. So this is an at a glance screen that tells you for each of your providers, what data do, they, do we have from them? And what is the oldest data that we have from that provider? And what is the newest data that we have from that provider? So um, for the books that I already harvested, we can see that we had up to, uh, goes back to January 2022, and the last harvest was uh, data for June. So we haven't got July, August yet. And that background job I'm running now, we can see that I've harvested title reports again, going back to 2022, and right up to last month, up to July. OK, let's go back here and let's just check they've both run. They have. Happy days. So we can see that from this provider, we've harvested uh, 2,688 uh, rows of data. Uh, so that's great. Um, 21,000 statistics, 22,000 statistics. And we can see the list of titles that have been added to the titles database. And we've got this checkbox here because it's a new title, so it's been added. But if we have perhaps have a look at this journal here, the AORN journal, and we go and have a look at that other, that other file, this file only had 450 rows. But we'll notice that the AORN journal already existed because it came in as part of the, the first file. So we didn't add the title, but we have add the, added the statistics. Okay, so that's great, that's harvested. So if I go back here, 
back to our data providers and we just go into that provider now. I'm hoping that under titles, we'll see some data. So this is all the harvested data. I didn't show you previously, but it was empty previously, honestly. But we can search within again. Uh, and again, we can export all the data if we, if we need to. And if we just have a quick look at the import logs, there are the two files I imported just now. So again, we've got an audit trail of, of what's happened. Okay, so that's the harvesting of the data. Let's have a look at the reporting side of it. So I think the first thing to say is, the most important thing to say really is we have deliberately kept the reporting for ERM separate from COA's reporting module. And the main reason for that is because of the uniqueness of, and the structure of the data and the way um, you need to report on it. So it's not that you can't report on it through the COA reports module, you can do, the tables are still accessible, you can still search on it. But as you'll see in a minute when I start creating a few reports, uh, the data is quite unique. So first thing to say is you can have a saved report. So here's one I created uh, before I came here. It's Wiley eBooks and I can just uh, select it and I can just run it. So I'm going to run it and you can see what we've got here is um, titles and they're from that books and, pla books and platforms provider and we can see month by month counts with the total at the end. At the top, we've got this dialog box here where we can switch between the years. Because we have got data going back to 2022, I'm just looking at 2023 at the minute, but I can go back and look at the previous year if I, if I want to. You'll also notice we've got a delete button here if we need to get, this, get rid of this report and start again. But let's just create a, a custom report, one from scratch. Um, and again, you'll notice that we've got some required fields here. And it's important to also point out that there are some dependencies between these fields. So, for example, if I, um, uh, if I select a specific report type like um, PRP1, platform usage, it doesn't show me every provider, it's only showing me the providers who actually support that report type, because otherwise it could be quite a long list. Uh, but if I remove that, we can see all the providers. Uh, in the same way, the metric types, they're also specific to certain report types. So until I select a report type, it won't show me. Uh, what the metric type is. So if I choose again platform usage, you can see that I have total searches by platform. But that total searches by platform isn't relevant for a title report. So if I remove that and just do a title report, again, we've got a completely different drop down list. So these are all context sensitive. Um, so let's just run one. Let's just run, run one by month. I'm going to go to that books and platforms provider. I'm going to just take a platform report. That's a, just a summary, a very generic summary report. Just number of searches by platform, 2022 to 2023. So pretty straightforward report. To point out here, we've got report columns. So we can add additional report columns to uh, the report, but in this case, you can see these are greyed out because actually that data is not in the data that I'm reporting on. And then I'll come back and talk about this in, in just a moment. But by default, I'm just going to have a table that limits by 12 columns, one column per month. So let's just run that. And you can see it's a very... Uh, very straightforward report. It is simply a summary by platform, by month. As we saw, we've actually only got data up till June, so we've got nothing beyond that. But if I go back and look at 2022, I've got data for the whole, for the whole year there to go back and look at. 
Again, I can export this data out if I want to take it to Excel or some other platform, analytics platform. Okay, let's try a different uh, report this time. And uh, this time we'll do a report by month, but with period totals. I'm going to take that journal providers uh, provider I just harvested, and we're going to have a look at a TRJ1 report, journal requests. And um, again, I want both of these, so I'm going to leave it blank. I'll just show you both of them. And again, we'll just go 2021 to 2020, uh, 2022 to 23, and we'll just do that. Uh, we'll add. Well, actually, we'll add the online ISSN as well because that's available. Now, this time, rather than just taking 12 months, I'm going to select no, and I'm going to say which months I want. So, if I want to look at a particular month to analyse the data for, see whether how quiet August is, I could just look at one month. Uh, or I can take a couple of months out. So let's just take out August and July, for example, and run that. So again, you can see counts by month, but you can see that there's quite a long scroll bar. So that's really why we set the default at those um, 12 rows per page, because it, it fits beautifully to that. Okay, and then uh, finally, let's just create a new report. And this time, I'm just going to do a report by year. Uh, I use my books and platforms report. Uh, I'm going to use a TRB1 to 2022 to 2023. And this time, I'm going to uh, save it. I'm going to save it as the annual ebook summary. And then I can either run it now, or if I go back to my reports, uh, my saved reports, it's there on my list. So if I want to add new reports, I, I can do that. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, just to go back, sort of to finish off, really, um, what's next? So uh, Matt and Pedro have finished, pretty much finished the writing the code, and they're going to submit it to the community uh, either this week whilst they're here or next week when they get back home. Uh, and with the hope that what we've produced so far will get into 23.11. The one thing we want to add before the release, if, we've, if we can, and if we're successful with the submission of this code, is the cost per use. That's the, really the holy grail of metrics. It's the one for every click of a journal. Actually, how much did that, how much did that cost you? So it's fantastic for analyzing uh, your packages and titles within those packages. There's two very specific pieces of work we've been sponsored to do. One actually relates to the holdings module, and that's the ability to import KBAR2 files. So that'll be great for uh, publishers other than EBSCO where they, they don't have an interactive API and you just want to load holdings, electronic holdings from them. So that's the important piece. Uh, the ability to add aggregators. So in some regions, um, aggravator, aggre aggregators provide aggregated statistics for all your platforms. So there's the German National Statistics Server, but in the UK we have a service called JUSP um, who, who also do the same thing. And again, we've been sponsored to add the, add the ability to do that. We'd quite like to um, add a, a specific set of default reports in those saved reports that might just be useful for everyone. So that's probably something we'll have a look at. Um, and finally, we'd very much uh, welcome some testers to come forward because at this point, when we submit the code next week, um, there's some testing to be done. There's a lot of QA to be done. Um, and without it getting tested and QA'd, it won't get into 23.11. So if you want to see it, um, please speak to me, speak to Matt, or contact us um, you know, after this week um, and get involved in testing that. So. I think I've pretty much finished exactly on time. 
It might be time for a question or two. We don't ruin the, the <coughs> timetable if we have a couple of questions in the audience. But Otherwise, it's sushi time. Yes, I'm afraid it's not sushi, but the lunch is served.